Since no k coloring of a graph exists for k less than the chromatic number, the chromatic polynomial will be 0 for all whole number t less than the chromatic number. So if we know the chromatic polynomial for a graph, we know its chromatic number. For example, here we have a graph with many edges, so let's find our chromatic polynomial. So remember what we're doing to find the chromatic polynomial is we'll join two non-adjacent vertices with an edge, and this will produce two graphs, the graph with an edge and the graph with an edge that's been contracted. The chromatic polynomial of the original graph will be the sum of the chromatic polynomials of the new graphs. So let's start by drawing an edge between vertices 1 and 2 to produce graph 1, and then we'll contract the graph to produce graph 2. And so the chromatic polynomial of our original graph will be the chromatic polynomial of graph 1 plus the chromatic polynomial of graph 2 which we form by contracting the edge. Now, we don't know the chromatic polynomials for either of these two graphs, so let's go further. If we start with graph 1, we can draw an edge between the non-adjacent vertices 3 and 4 to produce graph 3, and if we contract the graph, we'll produce graph 4, which is actually k5. So the chromatic polynomial for graph 1 is the chromatic polynomial for graph 3 plus the chromatic polynomial of graph 4. Meanwhile, in graph 2, we can add an edge between the non-adjacent vertices 3 and 4 to produce graph 7. Then we can contract to get k4, which we'll call graph 8. And so the chromatic polynomial of graph 2 is the chromatic polynomial of graph 7 plus the chromatic polynomial of graph 8. In graph 3, we'll add an edge between vertices 4 and 5, giving us k6, and we'll contract to get another copy of k5. And the remaining chromatic polynomials are to be determined. Now remember, graph 5 is actually k6, graph 6 is k5, graph 4 is k5, and graph 8 is k4. So we already know what those chromatic polynomials are, and so the only one we don't know is the chromatic polynomial for graph 7. Finally, in graph 7, we'll join vertices 4 and 5 to produce graph 9, and contract to produce graph 10, another copy of k4. So the chromatic polynomial for graph 7 will be those of graph 9 plus graph 10. So if we put this all together, graph 5 is actually k6, graph 6 is k5, graph 4 is also k5, as is graph 9. Meanwhile, graphs 10 and 8 are k4. So we could write our chromatic polynomial as a linear combination of the chromatic polynomials of k6, k5, and k4. And we can write the chromatic polynomials for the complete graphs k4, k5, and k6. And that gives us our chromatic polynomial for our original graph. Note that the product t, t minus 1, t minus 2, t minus 3 is a factor of all three terms. So the chromatic polynomial will be 0 if t is 0, 1, 2, or 3. But if t equals 4, the chromatic polynomials for k5 and k6 will be 0, but the chromatic polynomial for k4 will be 24. So our chromatic polynomial at 4 is 48, and that also means the chromatic number is 4.